Welcome to the Adventure Closet. I'm Liz and this is Charlie. We are two 80s and 90s kids that never lost their sense of wonder. We're all over the map, exploring wild and abandoned places, discovering rocks, geology, and history of different areas, all while living and traveling in our minivan Opal. I guess you can say our life is a mixtape of adventures. So hop in the van, hit the subscribe button, and let's go somewhere. Seeing a lot of these, uh, they look like old solar panel farms or new solar panel farms out out here. Still I think in, they're new. It looks like they're working on them. Yeah, still in Ohio, but uh, oh yeah, they must be new. But there's a ton, but none of them have solar panels on them, which is strange. Lots and lots of area. Uh, believe it or not, we are in Ripley, Ohio. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, it's focused on the raindrops. Oh well. This town was founded in 1812, and that's super old for us, being from the West. Like, that is an old town. so many old houses and they're beautiful and the trees like gosh those trees must be several hundred years old this town was founded in 1812 our state became a state in 1889 yeah so this so town was already like right there, seven years old by the time washington became yeah. a state Oh, I bet the cemetery has some old names in it. Yeah. Your beard's always getting in my shot. Like, I'm trying to get a nice shot out the window and then <laughs> there's that thing. That's right. <laughs> it's like, his beard needs a name. If you guys were gonna name Charlie's beard, what would you name it? Ohio Tobacco Museum. <laughs> That's crazy. I wonder if they have a camel jacket in there. Flea market and boat storage. We stopped at this Ripley uh, flea market and it was so cool. Like just tons of rows of just old junk. And uh, we met this guy that was selling old instruments and um, he uh, let us film him playing a little bit with this antique violin. And, it was just beautiful. Uh, yeah. There's some sort of factory up here. Uh, it's flower plant. Flower plant. <laughs> we'll see it through the fog up there. Oh yeah, over in Kentucky. We're still in Ohio, but that's Kentucky on the other side of the Ohio River. We'll be there in a couple of seconds. Yep. Can't believe we're gonna cross off another state. Yeah. We've been so fortunate to to see this beautiful country. We not, may not be doing all the fancy stuff, but we're experiencing everything. You don't. That's the bridge. Right there. Bridge to Kentucky. Bridge to Kentucky. It's a beautiful bridge. He 
Here we come, Kentucky. Oh, there it is. New state. Didn't think it'd be pouring down rain when we got to Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Welcome to Kentucky, y'all. Welcome to Kentucky, y'all. Quarter mile, Kentucky exit toward Maysville, Augusta. Uh, I just want to take a moment to thank Opal for getting us to yet another state. Yes. Um, <laughs> Uh, this van has been good to us. We are officially in the south now, y'all. Liz is gonna say y'all on everything. Guys, I am going full on country here, okay? We in the south, we gotta get some home cooking. My family has roots in the south, so gonna be a cool experience. I don't know who lives there, but they be fancy. Oh man, they be fancy. We're in Maysville. Kentucky. This is the Goddard Covered Bridge. Native original construction unknown. We just saw this really cool uh, wooden bridge that they don't know how old it is here in Kentucky. The and Goddard Covered The Goddard Covered Bridge. And it got us thinking like, what is the purpose of a covered bridge? Like that's a lot of extra material. And, and I thought, you know, it was to either protect themselves from the weather, like either they get them out of the rain or out of the sun. Yeah, um, but I guess a normal wooden bridge not covered only lasts like 20 years, so, uh, but a covered bridge can last over a hundred years because it's protected from water elements and all that, so. And that's why all the covered bridges that you see are so old, because they've outlasted all the other bridges that have been replaced with steel or concrete. Yeah, yeah. interesting factoid we didn't know. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It amazes us that you can cross the state line and see a completely different place, a completely different landscape. And uh, um, I've noticed a lot of greenery here in Kentucky. It's a very, um, it's actually kind of mountainous. So I guess we're still, we're kind of in the foothills of, of the Appalachian Mountains, or maybe are we actually in the Appalachian Mountains? A lot of cool old houses. Uh, but it's like, it's no longer the like colonial style. It's like something almost like Victorian houses. Like, uh, I don't know, but it's just, it's beautiful. All of it is. We are headed about 10 minutes outside of Moorhead, Kentucky, uh, 10 minutes south to a place called Paragon, which is supposed to have some free camping. And uh, we're gonna see what camping's like in Kentucky. Free camping, of course, because this is the adventure closet. We do free stuff as much as possible. Because we're cheap. I am still amazed with these landscapes. Like, look at these road cuts of all the rock and stuff along the road. Just kind of the hilly area that we're in. It's beautiful. Uh, we were told to check some of these road cuts uh, along the road. 
and uh, see, but it is a little too wet today to be checking road cuts and and uh, doing some rock hounding, so we're just gonna find some camp and uh, relax for a little bit, and then uh, we got some work to do. Tomorrow we're uh, doing a library day, so it works out perfect that we're 11 minutes out of town, um, 10 minutes out of town, in the Daniel Boone National Forest. So. Oh yeah. We actually just stopped and picked up lunch at this Hibachi Express place, which is just this little, you know, hole in the wall next to a gas station. And this is our first experience with Kentucky people and they have the, the accent and the extreme Southern hospitality uh, that uh, you would expect from um, people in the South. It was uh, some good food too. Uh, but it was it was funny just sitting there listening to her being so kind and helpful to everybody. And she's like, just take as many salsas as you want, y'all. <laughs> it was kind of cute. In half a mile, turn left onto Paragon Craney Road. So there's supposed to be some free dispersed camping up this road. However, there's no cell service, so we'll have to go back into town for uh, working later tonight. That's a water level April. 2020. May 2011. Okay, so this floods, apparently. And it's pouring down rain. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it is a bear area. I didn't think that this ah. would be a bear area. There's a garbage can there. Uh, they're considering closing this area for camping. Some nice campsites. Oh right on yeah. The water. That'd be great. Oh, and they have little bear hangers too. Wow. Uh, this looks treacherous. <laughs> wow, isn't that beautiful? campsite. So there is a porta potty here and it looks like there's actually garbage here as well. Which uh that's nice for free camping. We're gonna go a little bit further down the road and uh see what else we can find.
It was raining like crazy, but Charlie wanted to get a shot up here on this trail. Woo. There's Opal in Kentucky. What a babe. Good morning. Uh, last night, this is where we stayed. And, uh, nice peaceful area. Some cool bird sounds this morning. But, uh, today is a library day. So we can get some videos out for you guys. So that we have more time to make other videos. We're at the Paragon campground, I believe. And it is muddy here. Probably because it's been raining a lot. But we're probably going to stay here a couple days. Um, and check out the area. It's right near Moorhead, and looks like the water level is pretty low here. One thing about coming to a new state uh, is uh, you don't know if there's going to be a lot of snakes here. You don't know what kind of bugs you're going to run into. Uh, apparently this is a bear area. But yeah, it's, uh, it's a nice, beautiful place for free camping. And I think we're the only ones out here at the moment. You can see where the old water level is over there. But uh, it's time to hit the library and do some work. And then we can explore. <laughs> well, it's a rainy day and we got work to do anyway, so. Take the next left for Beacon Hill Road. We're already here. <laughs> We're going to the library. Google's always interrupting. Well, 
it is now, what time is it, like 6? Yeah, it's 6 p.m. and we spent all day at the library. And now we're heading back to our camp spot in the dark. We really haven't seen much of our campsite in the daylight. <laughs> no. Um, and uh, there is actually snow in the forecast. So, woohoo! Yeah, I didn't think it snowed much in Kentucky, but apparently it does. Yeah. So. It's 34 degrees out. It actually was warmer when we woke up this morning. It was 44 when we woke up. And now it is 34. So, head back and gonna hit the hay and see what tomorrow brings us. <laughs> Good night, y'all. That is snow in Kentucky. It's not a lot of snow, but it is snow nonetheless. That's something I never thought I'd experience. Snow in Kentucky. That's kind of a pretty picture. Well, that was fun. That was so much fun. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe and check us out on Patreon and we'll see you next time. Bye now. Bye now.